Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. G. Marshall. It was the immortal Satchel Page who said it. Never look back. Something might be gaining on you. A philosophy not without its merits, as Lot's wife, for example, could attest to. But like all truisms, there should be exceptions to prove the rule. This is a story of a girl who learned that. What? What is happening, Susan? It's all right, Mrs. Rudin. Just make sure your seatbelt is fastened and cross your arms in front of your face, like this. Mesdames et messieurs, we are encountering some difficulty. As a precaution, make sure all seatbelts are fastened and the chair is in the upright position as for landing. As indicated in the manual, please cross your arms... mystery drama, Look Backward Sometimes, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Roberta Maxwell. It is sponsored in part by x lax and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. The whole world loves Susan Talbot. Well, perhaps that's a slight overstatement. But certainly few Americans are unfamiliar with the snub-nosed gamine face, the intense but sparkling blue eyes and winning smile, and the flashing grace of that lithe, sunburned young body on a tennis court. A lady on whom fortune has smiled in reward for long, hard years of self-denial and discipline. Now she's reaping the rewards. The world is her oyster, and everything is coming her way. Money, fame, victory... As it is for her husband, Tony Marquis, everybody's choice for top singer of the year. But never forget Lord Byron's dire line, whom the gods love, die young. Way to go, Susie! Beautiful! Take the right out for the backhand down the line. Clean winner. Oh, your protege's a winner, all right, Bill. <laughs> oh, you know it. That's the service break she needs. Now, she'll take the match now, Tony. Mm-hmm. Which means she'll definitely go to Rome. But of course. She needs the Italian championship to keep ahead of the pack. And win number one ranking. Right. The closer she gets to it, the tougher it is to hold on to. Yeah. Gets tougher and tougher to hold on to a lot of things. Look at that passing shot. Beautiful. Uh, what'd you say? Uh, nothing. Uh, Tony? What? Tony, she's given up an awful lot to get where she is. Now, you're not going to deny her what she's got at last, huh? Bill, I want a wife, not a champion. You want to know something? What? Right now, I'm sitting here rooting for her to lose this match. Get eliminated. Because then maybe I'd stand a chance of talking her out of going to Rome. How do you like them apples, Mr. Tennis Pro? Well, I don't. But, oh, oh, the way it falls, I don't have to. Susie just took by Russian in straight sets. She won. Well, how do you like them apples, Mr. TV star? <sighs> I don't. See, I'm infected by the success bug, too, you know. And I make a lousy loser. But... Come right down to it. <laughs> I should complain. Most of the time, I'm tied up myself in the recording studio. Personal appearance is a flick. But at least the best part of the year, I'm in L.A. One spot, I get home nights. Not like Susie, scattered all over the globe the best part of the year. Well, the whole thing is just gradually backed up, and the Rome junket is only the last straw. It had to come to a showdown. 
I don't want to talk about it anymore, Tony. Well, whether you want to or not, you're going to. Look, I'm dog-tired after last night's wrangle, and I've got a plane to catch. Forget the plane. They're like streetcars. Another one along any minute. Tony, I want to get to Rome, get settled and rest. I've only got three days before the matches start, and I've got to get used to the surface. If it's as slow as it was last year, I'll have to change my whole game. Well, that's just what I'm suggesting, Susie. What? That we change the whole game. You mean I give up tennis and play it your way? No, you don't have to give up tennis. Heaven knows we don't need the money. You don't think I'd play tennis just for the money? Oh, no, of course not. But it isn't all just fun, either. Darn right it's not. It's a a 24-hour-a-day job in season. You know, you have another job, too. You're my wife. And if I stayed home like a good little mouse with your schedule, how often would I see you? Well, at least my work is right here in L.A., where we supposedly live. And Las Vegas. Oh, Vegas. And the personal tour. Well, it's only a quick swing around the country twice a year. Anyway, you could come with me to Vegas on the tours. You... Oh, great. Am I expected to sit through every performance listening to that mellow set of pipes? I love you, Tony, and I love the sound of your voice, but it can get to be too much of a good thing. Well, you don't have to come to the performances. What else would I do in Vegas? I have a better idea. What is it? Why don't you quit and just travel with me? What? You've got to be kidding. Of course I am. Just trying to let you see it from my side. Oh, come on. You're being unfair. If we had a real home life, maybe I could find a way to cut down. Maybe we could have a kid. Now, that's a full-time job to fill up your days. Why, you male chauvinist baboon. I should have a child just to please you. Well, wouldn't it please you? Not while I'm still heading for number one. Susan, suppose I tell you I have had it up to here. I want you to quit right now. Okay, you want to play it rough? How'd you like me to hand you down the same ultimatum? Oh, come on, don't be ridiculous. I'm a man. And I'm a woman. That doesn't make me a second-class citizen anymore. Tony, I haven't time to argue this out now. I've got a commitment to meet in Rome, and I promised Mom and Dad to stay overnight with them in New York. I just have time to make my plane. Well, you'd better stay over another day. Come on, give us time to settle this, Brannigan. Settle it how? You're not going to change my mind in one day. So if that's what you want, I might as well leave right now. Okay. If that's what you want, go ahead. All right, Tony. Uh, just one thing. Yes? You walk out on me now. Don't you ever come back. Ever. Why, you... Don't worry, Ego Head. If you can't take the heat, I'll get out of the kitchen with the same message you just passed to me. Drop dead. Of course, I should have run after her. We've had these blow-ups before. It didn't even occur to me it wouldn't be the same pattern. All I had to do was wait long enough for Susie to cool off and she'd be back. Only this time, I blew it. She kept on going. Drop dead was the last thing she said to me. If, if I'd only known how prophetic those two words were going to be, I'd have had my foot in the door so fast it could never have closed on us. rotten visit with mom and dad. I didn't want them to know anything was wrong and I kept waiting for Tony's call. About two in the morning, I gave up and called him. No answer. Then I got mad and caught my plane for Rome. But trouble always comes in bunches. Mechanical difficulty set us down in Paris. I had to change planes. I should have remembered. It isn't bunches. It's in threes troubles come. I decided not to wait for our substitute plane and took advantage of a flight about to leave with a few other passengers who were as eager as I was to get on with it. I didn't care there were no first-class seats available. I prefer to ride in the tail section anyway, and there's less chance of getting recognized there. So as soon as I was aboard, I grabbed a seat beside a sweet little old lady. Do you mind if I join you? Oh, no. (laughs) No, please. Be my guest. Sorry to crowd you, but they grounded our plane. Grounded? Some kind of mechanical difficulty. And my friend told me these things were so safe. You trust your friend. They are. Are you from Paris? No. From Wisconsin. Oh. 
visiting in Paris? No, I go to Rome. But here, the, the, the man with the charter says it is a, a set down. That, that is right, I guess. This is a charter plane? Yes. I didn't see you before when we came over the Atlantic. Because I wasn't on this plane. Oh. They grounded our plane, you see, and we had to transfer so we could go on to Rome. Ah, so you're going to Rome, too. That's nice. Oh, oh what, what does it say on the little box that lights up front? Hmm? Oh, fasten your seatbelt. We're about to taxi to take off. Oh, excuse me for asking. Not at all. Seventy-six years I lived, and I, I remember my father saying, Rosie, listen close and remember, keep your head in the clouds all you want. You couldn't go wrong so long as you keep your feet on the ground. <laughs> Seventy years I lived the way he taught me, and now I have to break my promise to him. I don't think he meant it so literally. You didn't know, Shalom Rubin. He meant it like he meant it. Now I turned it upside down. My feet could be in the clouds, but my head is down on the ground telling me I should stay there. This is only a short hop overland. You've already flown across the Atlantic and nothing happened. So shouldn't I quit while I'm ahead? <laughs> oh, don't mind me, child. An old lady who can't complain. What's the sense living? Uh, my, my name is Rosie. Rosie Roder. What do they call you? Why, I... Uh, my name is Susan. Susan Talbot. That's nice. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Miss, I think. Uh, you're not married. Yes, I... Well, uh, yes, I am. Some lucky young man, Mr. Talbot. Uh, no, uh, his name is Marquis. Oh, it's a nice name, too. Oh. Uh, why do we wait? I gathered from the hostess we have some VIP coming aboard. VIP? Very important person. Ah, oh, there's at least one on every plane. Imagine. Now, who would think on a charter flight there could be anyone important? <laughs> well, you never can tell. All these people, I, I think, where do they come from? What are they like? I look and I try to guess. That's an old game on planes, with me anyway. Could you guess? Sure. Some of them, anyway. Let's see. The couple two seats ahead of us on the other side of the aisle? Yes. Just married. On a honeymoon trip. In love, Natch. And English. In love, I could see. How do you know the rest? I remember the way I used to keep looking at my wedding ring when I started wearing it. Uh, they're English because her shoes are so ugly and his suit is so beautiful. <laughs> A lady detective. There is no need for this. I can find my seat. Let us please have no further delay. You can tell your pilot Juan Miron is here and take off. And be sure to wake me at Geneva when we land. I have some cablegrams to send. The jammer this year. We are now ready for departure. Please fasten your seatbelts as we taxi out for takeoff. And make sure that your chairs are in the upright position and that our cigarettes have been extinguished. Well, here we go. About time. Oh, Mrs. Roder? Are you all right? Nervous? Oh, uh, a little. Uh, would you, uh... Oh, but how silly that is. Would you like me to hold your hand? Oh, would you mind? I, I never thought to admit it, but I get scared out of my mind. There's nothing to be scared of. Nothing at all. The safest method of transportation in the world. Susan was right to reassure a worried old lady of 76, except there was one thing she couldn't know. That her premonition of trouble coming in threes was to be fulfilled. For this particular plane, on this particular flight, with certain particular passengers, had a rendezvous with destiny. I shall return shortly with Act Two. The liftoff from Paris is smooth, with no hint of the disaster to come, and the flight to Geneva equally uneventful. 
At Geneva, a few passengers debark to be replaced by others. And then Flight 11 takes off, winging across the snowy wastes of the Alps, headed for Rome. And this part of the journey is not so smooth. The captain has asked me to make sure that all of you have your seatbelt fastened. We are encountering some thermal drafts about which there is nothing to worry. But until we pass through the turbulence, it is better to be secured. M- Mrs. Rhoda. Rosie. Mrs. Rhoda, are you all right? Uh, yes, dear. Uh, we've just hit some rough weather, par for the course over the Alps. Oh, don't tell my head that. Tell my stomach instead. Look, if you're feeling sick, best thing to do is to keep your mind off it. I couldn't agree more. But how? Well... Concentrate on something. Oh, how about the game? What game? The one you taught me to play. Who people are. What oh, they are. Yes. Um, but didn't we exhaust most of the possibilities? Some new people got on at Geneva. That's right. Uh, now, let's see. What about that boy there? You mean one of the two American boys who had all the trouble about getting their Alpine equipment stowed away? No, no. The dark one. With with the sad eyes. Oh. That one. I guess. He's beyond me. A mystery. Those long, sensitive hands. It's a beautiful face. Latin. Like a medieval ascetic, the way I saw them in history books. Like he was a kind of saint. Or a sinner. Why do you say that? Just leave me alone, hostess. If I feel sick, I will be in private. Now, watch your feet. I'm terribly sorry, old man, but... Ah, sorry, my senor English one. I have no time for apology. I'm going to be sick. I say, hostess, that man should be belted in. (laughs) I'm afraid our poor VIP's composure is a little upset. I think it's his stomach. Like mine. Oh, it's so rough that I... Oh, what is it? It's all right, dear. Just make sure your seatbelt is fastened and cross your arms in front of your face like this. May it begin, monsieur. We are encountering some difficulty. As a precaution, make sure all seatbelts are fastened and the chair is in the upright position as for landing. As indicated in the manual, please cross your arms. I came home, dog-tired from a show rehearsal to the empty house, poured myself a scotch. I turned on the radio and was on my way to the fridge when the news came through. Exploding me, jet propelled for Geneva. By the time I reached there, the casualty list was being released and the news of the crash was all bad. Then, suddenly, selfishly for me, it was all good because Susan's name wasn't on it. And the news had come through that the plane had broken up. The tail section with six passengers was unaccounted for. So, the news was bad again. Somewhere in the icy wastes of the Alps was whatever remained of the plane's tail with its six passengers. And one of those six was my wife, Susan. Come on, Senor Saint. You've got to try again. No, it is hopeless, Senorita. We were fortunate to get the young Englishman free before the plane. But his wife's still in there. We don't know. Maybe she remained with the rest of the plane. That is beyond us. We cannot brave the fire. Oh, I guess you're right. What about the Englishman? He is badly hurt. I think he has a concussion, too. At least he is alive. As all of us survivors are. Five of us. Just five. Courage, Senorita. Courage. We're going to need it, Senor Saint. My name is Pepe. Pepe Silvera. Why do you call me the other? Oh, I don't know. I've forgotten why at the moment. How can you talk, talk? We must go to... Go? Where? How do I know? This wilderness, I don't know where we are, but I cannot stay here and die. I am Juan Miron. I am... It doesn't matter who any of us is. Do you realize where we are? On the edge of a glacier in sub-zero cold. Before it gets dark, we should seek some shelter from the wind. Why don't you look for some Pepe? And you, Senor Miron, see what you can do for the Englishman. I have to see if I can help poor Mrs. Roder. Oh, the old lady. 
Is she... I don't think she's badly hurt. Just bruised and shaken and scared to death. Like the rest of us. Go on, Pepe. See if you can find us some shelter. I will see what I can do, senorita. Mrs. Roder. Rosie. Uh, Rosie, can you hear me? Uh, who, who's that? Uh, Polly. Polly. Is that you? No. It's Susan. Susan? You know, we met on the plane. We were sitting together. Oh, oh Susan. The little girl next to me. The, the, the plane. And, and, and we crashed. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, I, I, I'm all right now. But, but the others? Some of us escaped. Uh, don't worry about that now. I just want to know about you. Oh, help, help me up. Are you sure? Help me up. No, nothing the matter with me but my, my silly old head. Oh, dear God. The plane. That's all that's left. And the people. You, me, the VIP, remember? He's trying to help the young Englishman over there. That's all? All we know about. Oh, except Pepe. He went to look for somewhere we can find some shelter from the wind. Pepe? The young boy I thought looked like a saint. You said a sinner. Oh. Why? Why me, Susan? Beg pardon? To be saved. Why me? I... I guess that's up to God. I mean, why any of us here? But I am old. My life is over. What is it to save for? Except for one little thing. Perhaps you were saved just for that. You think maybe? I don't know. Such a small thing. You don't know why I was going to Rome. No, but so long before your time, World War II, there was a, a campaign in Italy... The Italian campaign. Sicily. Salerno. He came through. Then at a place called Anzio. A beach like you go to for the summer. He was killed. Just another American soldier. He was buried in Italy. A big graveyard with so many others. Only a little white cross. I saw it in a picture. The soldier showed it to me. A big field. So many crosses. And for Paul, the same. No stone? Stone? He should have had a stone. I thought to mark where he was lying. But not in that place. That was only the place of the crosses. So we let it be. But when my husband died last year, it was still in my mind. And I thought, I am old. Who needs money? What is there left to live for? So I will go to Italy, and I will take my Polly, and I will bring him home to America. Senorita. Yes, Pepe? There is some shelter over there. A kind of cave, not far. And at least it guards us from the wind. Oh, that's wonderful. The plane is almost burned out. Better get out of the wind. We can huddle together for the night. By morning, a rescue plane is sure to find us. Here, Rosie. Wrap this blanket around your legs. Mm -hmm. And put one of these coats around you. Not too badly burned. Oh, who's to care? So long as it's warm. Oh, you, you bundle up too, Susan. Once I get the English boy warm, excuse me, Rosie. I've got to take care of him. Suzanne. Suzanne. What happened to you? Where are you? Somebody... Where is somebody? Huh? Huh? Here's somebody. Oh, about time. Where have you been, Suzanne? Suzanne? I love your name. Suzanne, my wife. You, mm, give me a hand. Here. Oh, that's good. Are you... Are you okay? A bit knocked about, but dauntless. What? That means Okay. Then I'm glad. Glad? Oh, definitely. It's nice you're feeling better. 
silly name. Peter means stone or something. Oh, my sweet Susie. It was all going to be so, so wonderful. Is he just in a coma? I think, I, I hope. So, his name is Peter. <laughs> Better than just being the Englishman. Oh, I, I'm glad we know his name. It, it's somehow important to all of us to have a name. I know what you mean. I wonder how he knew mine. I don't think he did. He said it different than you do. He did. Suzanne. That isn't English. It's French. Maybe that was his wife's name. You mean he thinks that I... Oh, the poor girl. Guy, I only hope... No, no, don't shoot me. Why should I not? Give me one good reason, you carry on pig. No, keep him away from me. He is a murderer and assassin. Oh, save me, save me, senorita. Do not let him shoot me. Then get away from the senorita. You obscenity. Please, save me. Pepe, what are you doing with that gun? What am I doing with it? I ask myself that question. Give it to me, Pepe. I am afraid, senorita. I cannot do that. Pepe. No, senorita. Please. No, please, stay away from me. I... Oh, oh the, the gun. Out of the way, old woman. Oh, stand back, Miron. I have the gun. Now, what is this? This, this murdering little pig would have shot me, but I'd I... I'd rather hear it from Pepe. Pepe, you all right? I don't know. There is a buzz in my head. And what does it matter about me anymore? I have failed my country and myself. This one, Miron... He and his kind, the few of the terror, have seized our country and made the rest of us slaves. I was assigned to liquidate him, to exterminate him like a rat. Pepe. Do not cringe, Suzanne. This is the way of life for some of us. I am a student at Geneva. But when my orders came, I caught the play my enemy was ordered to. And if we had not crashed, I would have killed him with no turning back. You see, a confessed murderer. Shoot him before he kills us all. You cannot trust him. Oh, the shut up. Then why were you threatening him, Pepe? This gross monster has, has something which, which, which might at least ward, ward of cold and death. Uh, yeah, he has a flask of brandy he was trying to keep for himself. What's wrong? My arm. It happened when we crashed. I think, senorita, I think it is broken. Now is our chance, senorita. Stay Give right, me that. right where you are, Miron. Is it true what he said? You. Would you take the word of this assassin against mine? I sure as heck would. Come on, level. I, I, uh, I have a heart condition. It is true that I carry, uh, but it is strictly medicinal. I, Give Mrs. Roder the flask. But I need it Give for my... Give it to her. Very well. Okay, Rosie. Give Pepe some brandy. Pepe would be all right. It, it was the, the pain made him faint. Give him some brandy. Why are you looking at me like that? I was only thinking what a good judge you are of men. I called him the sinner. You called him the saint. Well, whatever he is, we must fix his arm. I, I can help you. What is it? A plane. It's coming over us. You stay with Pepe and Peter. Come on, Miron. We've got to signal them somehow. In a moment, the rescue plane will be passing. Will it spot the survivors and relay a message to bring them relief? I control these things less than fate. And as fate will have it, this plane does not spot them. Why? Perhaps because the drama is not played out. There is some cosmic reason why these people at this place, in this moment of time, must play out their lives to a further resolution. I will return shortly with Act Three. Five people clinging to the side of a mountain in the frozen Alps. With dusk, a rescue plane has missed them, and now they must huddle together through the night, striving for warmth to last it out, praying for the dawn and the chance that searching planes will locate them. 
No one else to shape their destiny but a young girl with a gun, accustomed to the discipline of the athlete, but not prepared for a command position, except for the symbol of her rule, the gun. Now it is the next morning. Senorita Talbot. You know me? Yes, I play some tennis myself. Yes, I know you, senorita. Now you listen to me carefully. We must get out of this. We all have to. A moment ago, the mist lifted, and I think I spotted a town far below. How does that help us? I will not mince words. I am a rich and very powerful man, senorita. I can make you rich, too, when we return. It is snowing already and getting heavier. And soon, all signs of the plane will be obliterated. We are the only strong. We must escape together. How? There were two young Americans who brought some climbing equipment aboard the plane. I managed to drag it out. It was not burned. You and I could escape down the mountain. What about the others? An assassin, a dying Englishman and an old woman. They're weak. Let them die. We are the strong who deserve to live. Well, senorita, what do you say? Senorita Talbot, wait. I promise when we return, you will... Susan, darling, did that plane see us? I don't know. Do, do you think they know we are here? I don't know. How's Peter? Oh, you can see about the same. And Pepe, he is resting. I did what I could for his arm and, and gave him some brandy. Oh, here, here, child, you need some yourself. You're half frozen. Thanks. It's bitter like cold. That helps. Mr. Miron must be frozen, too. I'll take him some. No, you shouldn't. It's better for me to move my old bones a little. I didn't mean that. I meant... Oh, nothing. I suppose at least physically you can call him a human being. Give him his ration of brandy. Uh, Mr. Miron, would you like a little brandy? Maybe to ward off the coach. Senorita. Pepe, I thought you were asleep. Not while he is around. He has troubled you, this... this Miron. He doesn't trouble me, Pepe. He makes me want to throw up. What did he want? He wanted us to climb down the mountain together and leave the rest of you here. Perhaps I should have killed him, after all. That never solves anything, Pepe. You are right. Looks like there might be hope for the human race. It is what I must believe. Yes, yes. And for the individual, too. I wonder. This Senora Rota, we have been talking and she has told me of her son. But we are of the same age, her son and I. I mean, when he died. And she has asked me if I want to return to America with her. Would you go with her? Would I? I think you should, Pepe. You were not made for hate. What you are interested in is justice. You can find that in America. She is quite alone. She lives on a small farm. There is no one left to work it. Then go. You are not her son, but you can fill out her last years and find yourself and where you want to go at the same time. She's very lonely, like you. Oh, it is a dream of the most miraculous. Uh, no, but it cannot work. Why not? When we return to civilization, Miron will arrange it so I rot in jail for the rest of my life. When the time comes, Pepe, we'll see. In the meantime, I don't like guns. So I feel I can return this now. Luca! Luca! This is Miron! Forgive me, senorita, if I was too rough. But it was necessary, you see, that I have the gun. Now, we are at last back to where we belong. Miron, you thief! I swear... Quiet, assassin! Now, listen to me, all of you. The snow is starting to get heavy. Before it gets dark, the Senorita Talbot and I are leaving to go down the mountain. I am not going with you. There is one place too steep to manage alone. It will take two healthy people. The Englishman is no use. The old lady, she's too old. And my friend, the assassin, has a broken arm. You will go with me, or I shoot the rest of them. You had better go, Senorita. No, sir, not on your life or mine. He'd have to shoot me, too. You go alone, or stay with the rest of us, Senor Miron. A, a plane! There, there is a plane that's coming! Oh, she is right! A helicopter! Oh. It's almost over! He's, he's going to land! Oh. Senorita, we'll save! Oh. Oh. Senorita Talbot! 
What is it? Biron! Biron, help me! She's fainted! I told them at the hospital in Zurich that I was Tony Marquez, her husband, and somebody recognized me. And at last, I had her back in my arms again. And there, in that quiet hospital room, she told me the story of those seven hours on that godforsaken, windswept mountain ledge. So, Pepe will go back to Wisconsin with Mrs. Roeder. They'll be good for each other, those two, I think. Tony, can we help them? Oh, I think so. Uh, I know a few strings. We'll pull and see what happens. What about Miron? That's the irony of all time. I guess he really did have a heart condition. He collapsed on the way to the hospital and was dead before they got him there. Mm. For his sins. Seems that God was with you all the way. All of us. Oh, Tony. How long is it since I walked out on you? A thousand years? It'll seem that way if you don't intend to walk back in. If you'll have me. Oh, darling. Let's go home. Mm, I can't wait. No Rome? I can't think about tennis now. There's something I have to do. I must see Peter. Well, I thought you said he was out of danger. He is. But he doesn't know that his wife is lost. That she'll never be found. And, Tony, I feel that I should be the one to tell him. Will you understand? I'll tell you something, lover. I don't think I'll ever misunderstand again. Susie. Yes, Peter. I'm here. <gasps> Suzanne. It... You're not Suzanne. No, Peter. But I know you. Your face. Yes, yes, you you were on the plane. Yes, Peter, I was on the plane. We we crashed, didn't we? But Su Why are you here? Where's Suzanne? Peter, listen to me. Suzanne... Suzanne... Oh, of course. You don't have to tell me. I suppose I've known all along. She... She didn't make it, did she? No, Peter. She didn't. Why was I saved? Why didn't you let me die? I... I'm sorry. That's childish, isn't it? I'm sorry. So am I, Peter. More sorry than I can tell you. Except that, just a little bit, I've been where you are myself. But I'm so lucky. Because grief is a long thing, and for me it was short. I'm glad for you. What about you? Oh, what can I say? I suppose life is longer, and... I'd have to find some way to live it. I, I wish I knew how to tell you. I suppose I have to learn how to forget. But that's my problem. You, you go live your life and be happy. If it'll help any, your tragedy taught me to realize what I almost threw away. That, that helps a lot. Goodbye, whoever you are. And uh, thanks... Oh, uh, I say. Yes? Uh, forgive me. I, I don't even know your name. Oh, my name is... <laughs> it doesn't matter, Peter. It really doesn't matter. Where are we going, Tony? Well, I don't know. Do you? Yes, Back to Geneva, I guess, and the next plane for Rome? I'm not going to Rome. Tennis isn't that important anymore. Well, singing isn't that important either. You want to go? You want to have me? I'll, um, I'll go where you go. Darling, turn it around. It makes more sense. I go where you go. Susie, in the last few days, I lost you twice. Never again. I'll do anything to keep you. That goes double. I can always sing. I can wait a few years. Hey, let's have you go up to the top first. No, Tony. I won't let you give up your career. Mine doesn't matter anymore. Now, wait a minute. No. 
Now, you hold up and listen to me. This isn't something that either of us has to sweat out deciding. It's already being done for us. Mm-hmm. And what does that mean? Something I found out in the hospital. I'm not going to be eligible for singles much longer, and I can't qualify for doubles, mixed or otherwise, because my partner's too young to handle a racket. What? All he, or she, will be good for is making a racket. M Susie, you, you aren't... Now, y you mean we're, we're, uh... Gonna have a baby? That's uh, why they held me in the hospital for observation. I almost lost it. Oh, but but uh, you're you're all right now. Uh, Mother and child are doing fine. Oh, darling, I love you. And I love you. Mm. Mm. Oh. What? What is it? Can't you hear them blowing their horns? We're blocking traffic. <laughs> Forget them. They don't know where they're going. We're the only ones who do. We started with Satchel Page's sage philosophy. We end with another. The considered opinion of the Wahoo bird, who always flew backwards because he didn't care where he was going. He just wanted to see where he had been. Somewhere between the two lies the truth. So sometimes look backwards because what is trying to catch up may be someone you want to have catch up. I'll be back shortly. Within four weeks after the birth of her child, Susan was back on the courts. Within six months, she had her game back. And picking only the major tournaments, I don't have to tell you what she accomplished in the last year. Not only number one in tennis, but sportswoman of the year. Now she plays weekend tennis and not so much of that. Tony and she have a boat and the beginnings of a crew, Tony Jr. included Roberta Maxwell, Russell Horton, Earl Hammond, Christopher Tabori, and Martha Greenhouse. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Exlax. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. I hope you enjoyed this episode of CBS Radio Mystery Theater. If you enjoyed this and want to hear more, please subscribe to this channel. You can also visit my